Right. This will be the last lesson on time series analysis. So what we have been doing is basically using moving averages, all right, to predict the future. So this is another step, which is using seasonally adjusted data. So after today, you should be able to use a seasonal index to remove the seasonal component. So seasonally adjusted data is also called deseasonalized data, all right? And then be able to use the deseasonalized data to make predictions. And then able to discuss the reliability of the prediction. It's basically the same as moving average or center moving average. But this time, instead of using the moving averages, you're actually using the deseasonalized data. And what actually is deseasonalized data? Let's have a quick look. Last week, I uh, gave you this set of data. We talked about using quarter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we use that to work out the centered moving average, four point centered moving average, all right? Instead of quarter February, quarter, February 2017, May 2017, August, we just use the period one, two, three, four, five, six, represented numerically. We realize that it is uh, seasonal, and these are the actual sales data, and the period is actually four. All right, now, what I also show you is we could work out the seasonal index. Can you remember how to work out the seasonal index? Yeah, very good. So if you could work out the seasonal index, you know that there are, in this case, there should be four seasonal index because there are four seasons. And the sum should be 400%. All right, so from there, what we're going to do is use this. Using this, we're going to change all this sales data to take away the seasonal effect, all right? To make it look as if something it is like moving average, but not really moving average. It's just a de-seasonalized data, taking out the seasonal component of that, all right? So for seasonally adjusted data, we use the seasonal index to remove the seasonal component from each observed value in the time series data. These data will give the best estimate of the long-term trend. Removal of seasonal component results in seasonally adjusted data, also known as de-seasonalized data. All right? So all you need to know, write down at this stage, is the seasonally adjusted data or de-seasonalized data is actually the actual value divided by the seasonal index. All right? So if it is higher up, which is, let's say, 120%, it will be brought down, all right? To sort of like the average value, like the moving average, but it's taking away the seasonal component rather than thinking about average. It's just taking away the seasonal component, all right? So you should be, you should have in front of you this table which gives you the original data. What I'm going to show you is to get us to work on how to uh, work out the seasonal data and then use the seasonal data to um, do, uh, do a linear regression. All right, now that you know that se seasonally adjusted data or deseasonalized data is actual value take, uh, divided by season, seasonal index, can you then actually work this one out, sales? We, how do we work out the seasonally adjusted data? Let's use, go back to your data set. So February quarter is 130.25%. That's fair, all right? 141.80, which is May. 44.89, which is August. And November is... 83.06. These are all percent. This is November. All right. Now, let's have a look. If I work on the February data, how would I do that? So, let's use actual value divi divided by the seasonal index. Actual value, which is this, divided by seasonal index, which is 130.25%. Uh, Use your calculator and work that out. 
So May would be 10 divided by 14, 1.50%. All right, work at least four of them. Then I'll show you my answer. <coughs> Remember, the seasonally adjusted data, or the seasonalized data is actual value divided by uh, the seasonal index. Make sure that you've got 130.25% or 1.3025. All right? Either use decimal or use percent. We'll calculate four at least. Some of you do 2017, some of you do 2018, some of you do 2019. All right. I mean, in, in actual exam, you will not be asked to calculate every single one. You'll probably be asked, you'll be asked to show how to calculate one or two, that's all. They won't expect you to calculate every single one. As long as you know is uh, the actual divided by the um, seasonal index. All right, so if this is 8.95 divided by 1.3025, it will be lower, correct? It's bringing the sales down, taking away the seasonal effect. You can see that those two, the higher number, it will be reduced, and the two smaller number will bump up, will be bumped up. So this is what I've got. Can you check my answer and your answer, please? Should be about the same. I know I might have typed the uh, calculator incorrectly, although probably not. I use Excel to work this one out. Agree? Yeah? Very good. So now you've got the seasonally adjusted data. What do I would do with that? All right? First, I'm going to show you the plot. You've got the sales, the, the blue line is the actual data, and the orange line is the seasonally adjusted sales. All right? I mean, strictly speaking, I shouldn't have joined it, joined those numbers, but it doesn't really matter. You could actually put a straight line through that, couldn't you? Yeah? You could? Agree? You could actually put a straight line through that, and this time, you are not using any moving averages. You're using the whole lot of data. Got it? You're using the whole thing. So what you can do is, here, you can actually input this, the seasonal adjusted sales and period into your class bag and see if you could get uh, the regression done, please. If you haven't got a class bag, come and get one from me. Anyone without a class bag? Anyone without a class bag? All right, input that I want all of you to be able to work out the C, the uh, regression line. Get used to it. You should be able to work out the regression equation. I'll show you in a few minutes. So the period T, that's X, that would be Y into class back. If you can't remember the step, what we do is fill that in and go to regression, linear regression. So the difference between moving averages and using the seasonalized data is that moving averages you move, you miss the first few and the last few numbers, and you're only using part of the numbers at all. Whereas with the seasonalized data, you use all of them. If you've done it, give you a couple more minutes. You should basically go through to get that number. 
S equals 0 0.68790 T plus 5.4764. The only thing is if I type the number incorrectly into my class pad, I will get something slightly different. But this should be the correct equation. From there, okay. Once you've got, did you get the same equation? Yep, good. So, plotting that, you can see that that line is the regression line for the deseasonalized data. All right. What we can do is again predict the future. So here, that would be um, 12 is November 2019. 13 would therefore be February 2020. So if you could use this and predict some of the sales figures, please. All right? Look at the deseasonalized sales figure first. You are filling in the deseasonalized sales figure. All right? On this, you've got your, um, you've got your regression equation. Use it to fill in the deseasonalized sales all right that is the seasonalized and then we'll use the seasonal index to bump it up again or down all right so do that first now here like i said use this to predict the sales for the future period After that, we will factor back the seasonal effect, which is predicted seasonal value times seasonal index. All right. The predicted the predicted the seasonalized value can be obtained using class pair analysis trace as well, if you want to do that. If not, you just have to fill in and work out based on the time period. The time period was be. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and so on and so forth. And then once you've done that, you can try to work out the um, predicted value, which is the deseasonalized value times seasonal index. I know it's a lot of number for you to type in, so I would just get you to do uh, two or three. All right, get used to doing two or three because in the exam, you will not be expected to fill in every single uh, number. It's just way, way, way too many calculations. So, yep. So can you only predict the sales through the deseasonalized sales times the seasonal index? Sorry? Is the only way you can predict sales through the deseasonalized sales times the seasonal index? Yep, that's correct. Oh, okay. Yep, that's the only thing. Or you use the moving average. Read the question. The question will ask you to use moving averages or use the de seasonalized data. But that will result in the same thing. It will not result in the same thing because it's all statistics. It will be approximately the same, but not exactly the same. Okay. All right? I mean, statistics, it's really hard to say one is more accurate than the other. You're predicting the future. So that's the table I gave you. This is predicting the sales. That is for this. All right. Then this number times that number will give you the predicted sale. All right. This is an alive sale. This table, this one multiplied by that will give you that. Try a few numbers so that you're used to it. It's basically the same idea using the seasonal index. Then we'll talk about the um, reliability. It's a lot of using calculator. Now, um, Friday, I'm going to start 
with finance, please make sure that you have your class bag with you with finance. I am going to start using sequences again, and then the next bit, you will be using the financial capabilities of your calculator. All right, you need to really learn how to do that. Uh, because in the exam, I can't help you with the calculator. You just need to use it. Don't have to do that. All right, next. This is my answer. Hopefully, you get something the same. You would have worked out the deseasonalized data, and then you would have worked out the sales. All right? That times that will give you that. All right? Seasonal index, we worked out last week. That times that will give you that. So you can see that the deseasonalized data, it's increasing, it's telling me that it's increasing, but when you input it in there, that will be the actual predicted sale. All right? Which means, yeah, it could happen. Uh, February and May, you can have a bit more sale. August and November, a bit less sale. Think about the variation. So now let's talk about the reliability. Again, this is different from what we talk about in uh, bivariate data. We know bivariate, bivariate data, we talk about the prediction extrapolated is not that accurate. This one, we have to say that if it is within one cycle of the given data, they are considered as reliable. Anything away from that is not. So make sure that you use the same words that I use. All right? Within one cycle of the given data, it's reliable. If not, it's unreliable. And make sure that, think about the period. You start from period one, keep going two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right? So that's basically what, it is almost the same as what you would do as uh, with um, whatever you call it. Almost the same as what you would do for moving averages. Apart from moving averages, you are using the moving averages and you miss a couple of the, the data, which is the initial data, first two, and the last two initial data, or three or four. All right? This one will use the whole set of data. All right. So the summary, prediction using the seasonalized data. Determine the number of seasons for the time series data. Calculate the seasonal indices for each season. And then use the average percentage method to determine the seasonal indices for each season. So each one will have just one seasonal index. So if you've got three, let's say, three February quarters, you can work out the seasonal index for three February quarters and then take the average. Seasonally adjust the given data using the appropriate seasonal index. And then, yeah, you can view the seasonal, the seasonalized data graph to determine that linear regression is appropriate. General, generally, it should be. Um, and then determine the equation of the regression line for the deseasonalized data. I missed the word for the deseasonalized data. Oops. Okay, then determine the predicted deseasonalized value using the regression line. Calculate the predicted value by factoring in the appropriate seasonal index. Of course, the reliability, have to discuss that. All right, that's all I have for today. And this is the end of time series data. I will do a, re um, a recap and, uh, re and uh, summarize everything for you tomorrow.